small caveat before you start watching this video. In this video, I make a plexiglass box. I talk about visiting Tap Plastics 20 plus years ago to figure out how they do it. <clears throat> I talk about how to use certain techniques to build with acrylic and ways to get certain results. And then I don't get any of the good results during the build. I get a very mediocre box at the end of it. I'm happy with it, but I also feel a little bit guilty because, you know, I, I I put out a video saying, here's how to do something, and I'm not really teaching you how to do something in this video. You're just watching me build a mediocre acrylic box. If you want to build your own based on techniques you see here, please double check everything I say. All right, I think that's all. Let's get into the intro. Hey, everybody. Adam Savage here in my cave with my appalling, amazing beard. Yes. Uh, I recently did a one-day build where I showed how I sewed, hearing aid, where I showed how I sewed this beard onto uh, uh, a mesh. I bought this mesh beard made of yak hair from uh, an Etsy seller. We'll include a link in the comments below. Um, and then I sewed it to a wire, a spring steel matrix that I built. And I'm like, I'm totally obsessed with this beard. I love, I love how transformative it is. I like how invisible it is. And I know it's not totally invisible, but again, like for my purposes, like walking through a con, you know, it's a thing. By the way, also, as I as I'm like moving this, I'm having all this like PTSD about watching Jamie like adjust his mustache. You could watch him eat a burger and his like, the like small hairs at the top of his mustache would like prehensilely reach out and like scoop in the sesame seeds, kind of like a limpet or like a barnacle in the same way that they like eat krill. Jamie's mustache ate sesame seeds from its burgers. You're welcome for that image, everybody. <laughs> um, so uh, when I'm, I spend my whole life building things, which means I spend the time before building each thing deciding what to build. And in deciding what to build, sometimes it's really easy. Like, oh, I want to be an aliens colonial marine. Well, okay, that's a set of builds. Sometimes I like, like uh, I said this in the one day build video, I bought this beard as um, costume research for a costume I'm working on. And I didn't know that just receiving this beard and putting it onto this would be so um, compelling to me, but it is. I'm compelled by the face I can see in this beard when it's just hanging here. Like there's something about witnessing both this and it being on that I find fascinating. And in that vein, <clears throat> this obsession, you oftentimes when I make an object that I can't stop thinking about, hang on a second. <laughs> Often, when I make an object that I can't stop thinking about, one of the very next steps in my not being able to stop thinking about it is to consider <clears throat> a holder for the object that I love. I've made many vessels here. In fact, the very first one day build was a vessel for my Blade Runner gun. So today I'm gonna make a vessel for my beard. That's why the title of this video is Beard Vessel, which is a really weird title, I, I grant. But I'm gonna make a vessel for this that shows it off, basically, I thought to myself, oh, I love this. I'd like to look at it this way. Oh, and that gave me an idea for a vessel and that's the idea I'm gonna build. It's weird. I admit that up front. It's gonna be a strange thing, but um, you know, I thought of it. I wanna see it. I wanna make it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this John over here. Um, yeah. Beards, 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 let's get into it. <laughs> I just totally want to answer the door every day like this. How are you doing? <laughs> that, uh, okay. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, a large portion of this is going to be made out of clear plexiglass. And I've already done some figuring here. So I've done some figuring. This is the size of the box. It's going to be that on the face and the back. And the sides are going to be about this wide. It's going to be this tall. I figured this out just by literally like holding this up and holding it up and like, you know, making measurements and making. So what it'll do is it'll hold the beard nicely so that it can be transported, but also seen. That's a that's a key part of this for me is that I get to, I can see it, right? All right. Do I do this build wearing the beard? Hey, why not? Adam Savage does. Full one day build in cosplay, film at 11. This is something that I haven't done. Actually, uh, I tell a lie, a couple of Halloweens ago, we did some, um, hmm. 
a couple of Halloweens ago, actually now probably three, um, I dressed up as Captain America all day, and we had a whole bunch of tested people, everyone dressed up that day. I think I built something. I have pictures of me building something as Captain America. I think it was putting the finishing touches on the speaker here. It doesn't really matter. All right, um, so what I've got is two sides that are going to be about this tall. It's exactly eight by 12, that's amazing. And the width here, 4.5, 4.5 inches. So I need two of these at eight by 4.5, right? Right, here we go. Ah, 12 by I've got a base here. I've got back. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a plexi box, which I've done before in the cave, but this time I'm going to show you uh, the. This time I'm going to show you the uh, the way in which it. Uh, you can do it nicely. I'm gonna show you a, a slightly more advanced technique than I have shown before. To the end of making this a nice plexi box, I know because the paper is covering these pieces of acrylic that their faces are perfect, but these sides have some artifacts from my saw cut and I'd like to remove those. So what I've done is I've taped a couple of sheets of 320 grit sandpaper down to my uh, 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 granite surface plate. Um, and I am going to sand and flame polish the edges of these pieces of acrylic. And I hope to show you just how easy this process can be. Um, just takes a little diligence. It's not a complicated, it's not, a, it's not an overly complex thing to make a nice plexi box. So I've got a nice cut on the top and the, well, so. Yeah, here's how you do it. Oh, good job. Wow, I really messed that one up right away, didn't I? I've got two nice sheets of 320 grit. I'm gonna begin by taping them together across their back. I know, you were probably yelling at me to do this a minute ago. Now tape it down to your table. And, and this can just be a piece of masonite. It doesn't have to be a surface plate. It just happens to be a Flattest thing I've got here in the cave. Okay, so yeah, it's basically this. Until you have a surface you like. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on cleaning this. And it's a bunch of work, right? This is uh yeah. All right, welcome to the apocalypse. So here is, this is a bad edge. That is an edge with, can you see that? Yeah, I think you can. This is a good edge. And this is a bad edge. So we're gonna try and make the bad edge a good edge this way. And voila, that is good enough for us because we're gonna flame polish it. Okay, now I've got these, oh right, I guess, gotta get all four sides of this. 
Uh, actually, I'm going to do the uprights of this because it's more critical. Good. So this is an interesting one. Uh, I just wanted to like to say here, I'm gonna talk you through how to do a nice finished plexiglass box, but I might not, I'm gonna talk to you through how the techniques generally work as an overview. I am not going to slavishly try and get to a perfect plexiglass box because I just don't care. That's really true. Uh, but when you're talking about a plexiglass box, you're talking about the kind of construction you've seen in museums of plastic boxes that are edge glued like this with a weld bond and you can get these glass clear joins in the acrylic. Um, and at the very most basic level, how does tap plastics do it? Uh, they make all their cuts with a specific expensive blade that's exclusively for acrylic. It is an 80 tooth triple chip zero kerf blade. Uh, triple chip means that one chip goes this way, one chip goes that way, and one chip is in the middle. Uh, so it uh, makes a nice uh, flat bottomed cut, if I'm remembering correctly. And secondly, zero kerf means that the carbide tips don't hang out over the edge of the saw blade. It's a very straight cut. Um, <clears throat> and then at tap, after making that cut, they finish that edge on a joiner, uh, which is an expensive piece of equipment that you generally not gonna have in your shop. So uh, the joiner is a finish that is good enough to be flame polished. And I'm gonna show flame polishing in this video, but not just yet. So flame polish is the, is the least expensive of the polishing options of a plexi box. The most expensive is actual polish where someone has sanded it down to like 600 and then polished it with polishing compound. Uh, I'm not gonna do that today. Today what I'm gonna do, because I don't have a joiner, is I'm cutting it on my uh, my kind of semi-new table saw blade, and then I'm gonna finish using 320 grit, and that'll get me a finish good enough to flame polish. You might be able to flame polish. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, you might be able to flame polish with less of a grit, with 220 grit. I'm just, I'm starting with 300 today. It's, it's a small machine. I'm in a small box that I'm making. And I'm just going through here and, trying to remove the visible artifacts of the table saw cut, and also trying to remain relatively square. I mean, next time you're at a museum, check out the vitrines, the boxes in which stuff is displayed. <clears throat> that is the high, high quality work. In fact, if you go to the Cal Academy and you see some of the fish tanks there, some of the techniques for gluing the big, fat, heavy-duty cast pieces of acrylic, some of those techniques and glues and formulations are all trade secrets of those companies. That's how, that's how specific it can get. But I'm giving you the basic tap plastics. How do they make a box? Triple chip, 80 tooth, zero kerf, finish on a joiner, flame polish. That's the inexpensive tap plastics box. And I'm doing a kind of a modified version of that because I don't have a joiner. Or is it jointer? I think it's jointer. Much better. Sorry. Forgot doing this build in character. My next guest needs no introduction. Yeah, it's almost a crazy Dave Letterman beard. I'm having so much PTSD of like working with Jamie wearing this because I look in the camera and I see myself do this and that's like total Jamie move. I know, I could laser cut this, but I'm not gonna.
All right, I think I'm gonna. Yep. So this measurement is four point. Can I say, just this wispy beard is, it's warm. I mean, I get why the crew of Jaws were all wearing heavy beards. I understand why you wear a beard in the cold, but here in San Francisco, it's making me sweaty. All right, uh, eight by 4.625. Oh, no, it's not. Ha <laughs> ha, almost messed it up. Um, the front of this case will be a sliding door. So I'm going to notch uh, here. Can you even see that? I'm gonna notch right here. Yeah, there you can see it. I'm gonna put a notch there and there to accommodate the sliding door. I just want to test this. Okay, so then this one comes over the top. And it is that. Bingo, that's a bingo! So now I'm about to glue this up, and to do that, I'm gonna pull this up, pull all the tape off, because I can reuse the sandpaper. You want a really neat and clean surface to do your construction on. And I'm going to put some brown paper on it. I'm not going to tape all this, the edges down here. It just, it's not that important. Just creating a nice clean surface. All right, I'm going to peel up the paper on this. So, um, because I am gluing this to this, my glue edge of the acrylic here is uncovered with paper. So I'm not gonna peel any of the paper off this piece. No, no, I am not. I am gonna peel the paper off the inside of this piece. If you're wondering if I have like some excellent technique for peeling the paper off old plexiglass, I don't. This is an old plexiglass. I think I picked these up in the scrap bin at Cat Plastics just a few months ago. But I don't need to do the back side of this because again, it's not getting covered. Um, you know what? Just in order for me to be able to see, I may do the, um, I may peel the outside of this. I wanna see the glue joint. You'll see what I mean when I do it. Actually, along this whole thing, just in order so that I can see that I have the right saturation, I am gonna peel all the paper off. I, this isn't the best practice, but it's been a long time since I've done this and I need to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to. All right, so I have the box set up and the way it's set up is really important. Uh, all six pieces are clean and their edges have been sanded, all five pieces. Um, I'm about to use a weld bond glue, which is this stuff in the needle applicator. And when I put it on the acrylic, it's gonna melt both sides of the acrylic. And hopefully when it dries, it makes them one. So I'm sure you've seen the edges of some of those giant tanks at the, uh, at the aquarium. So it's the same way they're done, different formulations and different kinds of acrylics, but same basic idea. Um, this glue 
it will mark any of the um, pieces of plastic that it touches. So I have a technique for keeping it from going where I don't want it to go. And one of the techniques for keeping it from going where it doesn't want to go is this right here. You see the toothpick there? The toothpick is creating a little bit of a rise so that the tape isn't touching the seam. That means when the glue wicks down this seam here, it won't find the tape and then wick under the tape. That is a bad situation. And it may happen here, but we're gonna try and run it off at the pass. So I'm gonna run some glue in here like this. I'm gonna run it across the tops. I'm gonna let it sit for a while. I'm gonna run it up here and watch it run down here. And then I'm going to let it sit for probably half an hour and then turn it over and add uh, some more glue to get it all wetted out. Then I'm gonna break out my um, torch and I'm gonna flame polish it. Okay, so a technique for keeping your, so one of the things about the acrylic glue is that it's thinner than water and it's very much like an alcohol base. So it flashes quickly, it flashes off. Um, which means if you hold it like this, it can sort of boil out of, the, out of the tip just from your body heat. So what you do is before you apply it, you squeeze the bottle. Now the bottle's under some negative pressure because it wants to revert. And you see that boiling? That's the bottle pulling air into it. And that's the, that is how you want the bottle to be the whole time you're using it. That way you're not gonna accidentally add any badness to this. So here we go. Not a lot of saturation there, but oh, enough. Oh, okay. Okay. Feels like I got enough penetration in the corners to be able to uh, It's not a perfect wet out. No, it's not a perfect wet out, but I never said it would be. I never promised you a rose garden. There we go, good, good, good. Yeah, I think that's kind of pretty. Yeah, I'm sure, I know, I know. I'm sure the tap plastics people are probably yelling at me. I don't mean to say that I am using a tap plastics accepted technique. This is just what one technician showed me like 20 years ago and I've used it ever since to pretty good results. Um, when I need really nice boxes made, I hire someone to make them. That's, that's the, the cost benefit analysis is such that it's cheaper to do that. Um, but this is sitting and it's gluing and I'll show you some close-ups of what the seams look like and hopefully there'll be like one good seam and I can show you what a good seam looks like. But it's most likely that I'm gonna show you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eh, medium seams. All right, um, while we're doing this, I can now figure out how big that front piece is. And I always like to do this practically, like with the actual piece. Whenever I make this number theoretical, like, oh, it should be, if I do the math on the, uh, one thing is you can never count on the actual thickness of acrylic, whether it's extruded or cast matters. Uh, the variance can be plus or minus 50 thou. I mean, it's, it can be significant when you get into the thicker acrylics. Um, so I always make these measurements in situ and then All right, I think this is together enough to turn it over and do a second glue on the other side. Yeah, all of these seams are just okay. Oh, wow, whoops, whoops, whoops. 
No, don't, 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 Oh, yeah. This is what it comes from being impatient. Uh, it wasn't that bad. I don't think I messed it up that bad. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Sometimes that can really just like ruin your whole day. Moment of truth. <laughs> I love it. I'm very happy. Oh, that is a lovely feeling. So I think my box is mostly finished while it sets. And yeah, I'm gonna let it set. Oh, I'll show you all the close-ups of my bad glue seam. Actually, maybe I can get a little bit more glue in the side here. Okay, so uh, now, well, obviously I need a handle, so I'm gonna cut that. Now the experienced plastic uh, fabricator will do most of this without peeling the paper off of much of the glue. And that has the purpose of leaving the paper to protect the surfaces while the box is being assembled. And only mission critical edges are revealed. It's a whole, there's a whole process to it. Um, and like I said, I'm not doing that process, but let's see here, can I get, yeah, I think I can get some more in there too. All right, I think that's as good as I'm gonna get here. Um, so the handle. Yeah, something like that. Look at that. Oh. Oh, oh my gosh. Why, it's the one six scale atom figure box. That's not what it was meant to be. All right. Here's the handle I'm gonna cut out. I'm gonna rough it out on the bandsaw and then finish it on the mill. By the by, if you ever have to um machine with acrylic, you want to use cast, not extruded. It will, it is the only way, it is the way. Uh, to walk you through that, I drew my lines and I cut these four sides, this one, this one, this one, and this one by eye according to the pencil marks, close enough. Then I, uh, I cut this piece and made its thickness match this. It's pretty consistent. It'll sit like this, like, yeah. And then I'll just glue it on. Yeah, it'll be really nice. Um, and you'll get to see a machine edge, which is not that bad actually, especially with cast acrylic. Seriously, you really want to go with cast acrylic, not extruded for machining operations like this because it's way less melty. It's more pellety when you cut it and machine it. And you see that? That's not a bad piece. Yes, I could go and, oh, hey, I can show you a flame polish on this piece. Here we go. All right, flame polishing. Oh, it's Yak here. Yeah, I was thinking if this is like, you know, some kind of fake beer, poof, the whole thing goes up. My head is like, yeah. All right, so here you go. Flame polishing is, get myself out of this corner here. 
Flame polishing is a tricky business. It takes some skill, takes a little practice, not a ton. You just gotta be careful about it. So what you wanna do is you wanna go in and make sure you can see the light of the reflection of how it's going to polish. And then come on in and just do it and just do it. Oh, ow. Well, that is not nearly as exciting as I was hoping it would be. Um, and I think it has to do with the difference between the cast and the... Yep, I'm not showing you proper flame polishing technique here, because I don't think I'm using the right acrylic. That certainly made it a little, a little nicer to my eye, but probably not much to yours. But that's what flame polishing is. You literally just don't stop. You want to move along. You don't want to get it too melty. We're going to put this right here. We're going to measure it roughly center by eye. Oh, yeah. We're going to measure it roughly center by eye. <laughs> that was literally... I'm sorry, but I feel like you should be impressed with that because I am. Okay, here we go. Hold it down here. Let it wick all the way through. Okay, oh, right, 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 the beard clips. I need beard clips. I have to make a pair of beard clips and figure out where they go. I don't want you to see how this looks just yet. Ooh. Do I need a, do I even need a beard clip in here? I kind of feel like I do, but. <laughs> Bandsaw noises. All right, here we go. I'm just going to uh, clean up this piece. I want to flame polish that edge. Okay, I have one more tab to make, and it is a tab, well, you'll see. You'll see! I cut out this little shape on my bandsaw with my belt sander. I trust that you can use your imagination to figure out how that happened. I don't mean to insult you. That sounded like I was being insulting. I trust you could use your imagination. I'm just, you know. Sorry, my apologies. So now I'm just gonna smooth this out. All right, I'm gonna give you a close up so you can watch the glue wick in. So hopefully you'll be able to watch the glue wick in here. I am going to um, put a little bit of pressure on top of it. Just uh... And again, squeezing out the air out of the bottle. And a little pressure on top. Oop.
See that? Did that, was that something that you were able to actually see? I'm not sure, I can't tell. This, this is, I'm, look, I fully recognize the absurdity of this how-to. Like, I'm gonna show you how to do something, but I'm not gonna do it the way I'm telling you how to do it. I'm gonna do it to a much lesser standard. But if you have greater standards, here's how you could do it. Here's how I figured this out. I was thinking, how do I make good plexiglass boxes? And I thought, I don't know. I mean, I kind of know roughly how it happens, but wait a minute. Hey, I'm ordering stuff from Tap Plastics all the time because I was in San Rafael working for Lucasfilm, ordering from the Tap Plastics in San Rafael on a weekly basis. So I called up the manager that I dealt with and said, hey, could I come in and spend two hours watching one of your guys make a box? And he said, absolutely. This is the kind of thing you can do. People will show you their stuff. Yeah, you can just ask, how do you do that? And they'll explain. People like sharing their techniques. So uh, that one worked out great for me, as you can see, because I'm such an expert at this. <laughs> All right, uh, time for some labeling. <laughs> this makes me very happy. This is, uh, yeah, so this t this is here so I can lift this up, All right? Isn't that nice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says Beard, Savage, I've signed it. Uh, I guess maybe I could add, yeah, care, made by blah, blah, blah. And maybe I'll make others of this, I mean, I like the idea of a makeup department where it's like, beard! Yeah, I really dig this. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why I wanted to make one of these. I don't know why I had to see it, but I did and I have and I'm happy now. It's Friday, it's four o'clock, I'm gonna go home. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this one day build. I am sure that unlike young me in 1999 when there wasn't any instructional videos for acrylic box construction online and I had to go to Tap Plastics, I am sure that there are now videos about this that are more comprehensive than mine. If I find one, I'll include a link to it in the comments below. But until then, you'll just have to deal with my middling expertise. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me for this one day build. I had a lot of fun. All right, I'm gonna go home in disguise. Oh, yeah. oh. I just yeah. discovered the best part about this is, hey, how does the spirit look at me? Oh yeah, not bad. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching that video. If you'd like to further support us here at Tested, one of the single best ways you can do it is through a Tested membership. Now there's a link below as to the various levels of tested membership, but at the top level I want to explain it's so much more than videos that are exclusive. There are Q&As, there are live streams, there are some exclusive videos, but the thing I love most about the tested membership is the interactivity, the constant and wonderful communication between the tested members and not just me, but our entire team. Every day it feels more and more like a beautiful community just devoted to the joys of making. So join up and become one of us, one of us, one of us.